Hi there YouTube and welcome back to episode 4 of the Bolt Build. In today's episode we will be painting some of the chrome parts and some of the metal parts from the engine and the bolt itself. Trying to fix some of the poor attempts that I made when I was trying to wrap it. So stay tuned and roll credits and we'll catch you soon. guys my name's Jez and I'm the man behind the beard as I said this is episode 4 of the bolt build so we are four episodes deep we've already had one failure and hopefully we won't have another one now before I do forget if you could please like and subscribe to the video that would be much appreciated in helping the channel grow now painting itself so painting to me is a mixture of chemistry and art chemistry and the fact that you've got to have the right conditions so you've got to have it at the right temperature you've got to make sure that your surfaces are clean that they're keyed correctly most of the work goes into the prep work if I'm completely honest and then an art form in the fact that you've got to make sure that you get the paint lying correctly you know you don't rush it and you take your time really and for those that have ever painted before you'll know exactly what I'm speaking about but for those that don't know what I'm talking about, this isn't going to be an exact how-to. This is just what works for me, what paint I'm going to be using. It's, as, as I said, none of these videos are a how-to. If anything, you're going to be learning from the mistakes. And touch wood, we don't have a mistake in this episode. But, let's make a start. So for those with a keen eye, you will notice that the headlight is now free of the headlight bezel. And that was thanks to the JIS screwdrivers that my lovely wife brought me for Christmas. So we were able to get that troublesome screw out. Now looking at the overall condition of the bezel, it's not that bad. Uh, there is a bit more rust than I saw behind the headlight itself. But what we'll do is we'll give that a bit of a rub down. We'll get rid of that hopefully. And then when we get a good coat of paint on there, that'll protect it from any more rust going forward. It is on the front of the bike and there is a lot of little nooks and crannies where water can probably get into. So a good lick of paint and that should stop that getting any worse. Now the paint that we're going to be using today is Simmons's or Simmons, however you want to pronounce it. Gloss Black Tough Paint. Fantastic product, doesn't require any primary at all. Um, it is quick drying, durable and chip resistant and I have used it before on my GSXR shock uh, front fork sorry and they've been on there for probably about three or four months and it is something a bike that I use on a regular basis through all sorts of weathers um, and it's held up really well so for me it's the perfect um, paint to use on the bolt just to cover these parts up because especially with the headlight bezel that is on the front of the bike you know that's right on the front and then we've got the uh, left side cover itself very low to the ground and going to be very susceptible to stone chips and then we've also got the um, bracket for the uh, battery cover which you know it's tucked up out of the way but let's face it it's nice to have all the colors matching so as I said to you before, none of these videos are going to be a how-to, it's just going to be about what works for me itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to key the area and get a good adhesion for the paint. So what I've got is I've got some 800 wet and dry. Now it's probably a little bit fine, but what it allows me to do is it allows me to get in all the little nooks and crannies. You can use um, a scotch pad, so a... Uh, a grey or a red scotch pad itself whatever's really available I haven't got any at the moment which is why I'm using the 800 now I've said to you before that conditions need to be near enough perfect for this so what we've got as well is we've got the heater on in the background just heating the you know the ambient temperature of the garage itself the instructions on the paint say that it needs to be around about 21 degrees so we've got the heater running in the background and then what we'll do is before we're ready to paint we'll 
check the temperature, make sure we're at the temperature that we need to be. We'll quickly clean the parts. And what we'll also do is we'll actually turn the heater off. Now, painting with an aerosol can or any sort of paint, whether you're doing it through a compressor, is highly flammable. And what you don't want is you don't want a lovely heater in the background going off, catches some of the paint fumes, and then bang, you're suddenly on fire. The lights in the garage itself are LED, so they are very low current, and hopefully we shouldn't have any problems there. But we do have a fire extinguisher on hand if we do have any problems. Now there are plenty of painting videos out there on YouTube, so what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to bore you with the full ins and outs. What I am going to do though, and I'll, I'll switch the camera off for this and we'll pick up with you later on, is I'm just going to give the parts a little bit of a rub down, like I said, to key the area. Make sure that you take your time on this. All of the work that goes into painting is in the prep. The painting actually is the easiest bit. But as long as you make sure you've got a good key on your part, you clean it up correctly with wax and grease remover, there's no dirt, no dust, you should be fine. Now the paint that I'm using is, <clears throat> as I said, it's a great little product really. It doesn't require any primer. Um, it is very durable. So once keyed, we should get a nice little uh, coat on there as well. And um, we'll pick up with you when we start applying the paint. Bear with me and as I said, with the power of editing, we'll suddenly pick up once these parts have been rubbed down. So we've now rubbed all the parts down itself. It's taken a bit longer than usual. I don't think the 800 grit was the best of papers to use. I'd probably gone something a little bit of a harsher grit, like I said, or maybe some scotch bright itself. So some gray or red scotch bright would have worked perfectly. But we've managed with what we've got. Like I said, I've got 800 grit readily available to me within the garage. So that's what I've used today. As you can see, we've also got some additional parts which weren't in the first part of the video. So what we've now got is we've got the airbox, which you saw in episode three, which we wrapped. The wrap quality within the corners of this was, was absolutely terrible. Um, so we've taken that off, masked off the bits that we don't want to get painted um, and give that a rub down. And as you can see, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, if it focuses there. Uh, we've got quite a good finish on that itself gone through to some of the bare metal as well so we definitely know that we've got um, a good sanding surface on there the chrome on the headlight bezel um, has gone all matte so we know that we've we've keyed that quite well and then what we've also taken as well as some of the exhaust covers off the header pipes the reason well this is a bit of an experiment really um, I know that the paint that we're currently using isn't heat resistant paint. However, these aren't exactly all touching the exhaust itself. They're on little brackets. So they'll get hot, but they won't get high heat hot, if you get me, if that even makes sense. So we're gonna spray those up as well. Again, match the rest of the bike. We want it to look mean, we want it to look black. So. I'm going to paint those in the same paint and then what we'll do is we'll uh, do a bit of an experiment to see how it lasts, how it works across, you know, uh, uh, next few months or years, etc. And do you know what? If it doesn't quite work out, we'll just repaint it. Uh, we'll get some high heat paint, rub it all down again. Yes, okay, it's time, but let's face it, you know, I I'm willing to put the time in itself um, and we'll just repaint those itself. Now I've got rid of the bikes out of the garage itself. Um, I don't want any overspray going onto the bikes. I want to keep those pristine. Um, but I've set up a little table which I've painted on before uh, just to get the parts on. And then what I've done is I've raided um, my wife's cupboard and I've found a lovely Ted Baker box which will open up and will turn into a little bit of a makeshift paint booth. So I'll put some of the smaller parts in there again just to make sure that we, we try and keep the overspray down to a minimum. Um, next step though is we need to clean the parts. So I've got some acetone itself. Just started cleaning those down with a cloth as you can see there. Going to do this two or three times um, before I put the parts in the place where I want to paint them. Excuse me. 
just so I can get the, the, the best possible finish going, get rid of any wax, grease, anything like that off the, the parts itself, any of the particles from you know the rubbing down that we've just done. Once I've got the parts laid out, ready to paint, what I'll then do is I'll rub them down again and then what we'll do is we'll start shooting some paint. So we've rubbed all the parts down now um, and we've wiped them all down with wax and grease remover and acetone. We've placed them in their positions that they're going to be sprayed in. Tried to space them out as best I can just so we don't become a victim of overspray. The battery bracket I've hung up just because I want to try and get as, as many sides of that. It's quite a complex piece with all the bends in. So we're hanging that up to try and get the best possible finish we can. Um, and then what I've done is I've got the engine guards themselves um, laid out on the table here. I've also give the area a quick rub down as well. Um, the acetone's just flashing off and then the paint is just in front of the heater at the moment. Again, it's important that the paint in the can doesn't have to be hot, but room temperature and warm is ideal. What that does is when you actually spray using a spray can itself, it just allows us to uh, it come out of the end of the nozzle quite smoothly um, and it doesn't then come out a bit like spit, basically. I know that sounds a bit gross. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to shake it up. Apologies for the camera then following the shake as well. Once we've shaken it up itself, we'll start laying down some paint. The first coat is always going to be a mist coat and that's going to be a bit of a guide coat as well, just so we can see how the paint's laying down. Let you get used to how the paint comes out of the nozzle on the spray can itself. So I'll give it a quick shake, It'll probably take a couple of minutes to do that, make sure that the paint's nice and mixed up in the cans itself. And then like I said, we'll finally get back to it and we'll start laying some paint down. Right, sorry about that ladies and gentlemen, the previous video I just recorded, well sorry, clip, uh, for some reason didn't didn't save, so what you've actually missed is, as you can see there's just a slight tinge across all of the parts, what we've done is we've just laid down a little bit of a guide coat, so nothing too major, lovely light little strokes, just leaving a little bit of paint across the parts itself just something again for the paint to adhere to when we start laying down a bit more of a wet coat. Heat is back on, like I said it's important to keep the temperature up in the garage itself, we don't want it dropping below 21 ideally. Uh, checked it before we did spray and we were about 22 degrees so really important and the temperature will drop just because it's started to get dark here now, uh, it's about 6 o'clock at night so and again, we're, you know, 1st of January today, so quite cold. Uh, what we're going to do though is we're just going to let this flash off. It suggests giving it 20 to 30 minutes between coats. So I'm going to go in and get myself a lovely cup of coffee. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll come back and we will lay down our first wet coat. Catch you in a minute, guys. Okay, so it's been about half an hour now. Um since I laid down the guide coat so it should have flashed off and started to dry quite nicely ready for its second coat this will be a bit more of a, a wetter coat as I start to lay that down I've just shaken the can itself again for a couple minutes it is important to keep the, the paint mix well within the can when you are spraying with a rattle can itself uh, just so that the chemicals are, are well mixed within there now I will go quiet when I am spraying, uh, I did forget to mention at the beginning of the video that I am wearing a respirator and I am in a well ventilated area. I'm
So that's the first wet coat down. For those eagle-eyed viewers, you will notice that the um, fan is running. There is no heat coming out of that. So I'll switch the heat back on in a minute just once the, the fumes have dispersed. Uh, the fan's just, again, just giving it a little bit of extra ventilation, really. Uh, some of these paint fumes are very toxic and you don't want to be breathing those in. So please stay safe when doing this yourself, guys. Now, again, like I said, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes between coats. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video again. Magic of Edison, as per usual, you won't even notice that and we'll pick back uh, up on the video as soon as we're ready for the next coat. All in all, we seem to have had a really good uh, run in the garage tonight. So we have got three coats of wet on the parts. And as you can see, they are glossy smooth. This down here is almost a mirror finish, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, like I said, I can't recommend the paint enough. Uh, it is a tough black paint. If we focus on there. Uh, quick drying, chip resistant. Don't need to primary. You do need to prep it, like I said. You do need to prep the paint. Um, I think every paint will need that itself. Uh, we've kept the temperature up at about 20, 21. So we've do dropped a little bit below where I wanted to be. However, the finish that we've got is fantastic, so I'm happy with the results there. So what I'll do is I'll uh, leave you with a few cinematics of the parts, just something a bit artsy for you. Um, like I said to you many times before, please do not forget to like and subscribe to the videos. Um, comment below if you've done any painting yourself or if you found this video slightly useful. Um, the colour itself, like I said, is Simmons. Tough black in gloss. They do a satin as well, and it's available um, all over. I got mine from Eurocar Parts, where I know you can get it from Halfords, B and Q, um, a lot of DIY retailers. So that's it for tonight, folks. Thanks for watching. Catch you soon.